Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the first in a two-CD set of Schumann symphonies in the orchestrations by Mahler. Um, this is, I think, the second of the official Mahler Schumann symphony cycle releases. The first was with Ricardo Chailly in the Leipzig Gavant House on Decca. Good luck finding it outside of a big box or something like that. So here we have Marin Alsop with the ORF Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra. Now, we don't exactly need more Schumann symphony cycles, do we? And tinkering with Schumann's orchestration has been, well, since Schumann's day, something that everybody did because Schumann's orchestration was lousy. That doesn't mean it wasn't sort of appropriate to his purposes for the most part, and I don't really have a problem with it. I, most conductors tinker. They have to tinker. You must tinker. And it's very interesting to try and understand what the issues were that Mahler attempted to resolve in making his orchestrations. Now, let's be clear. This says, this is reorchestrated by Mahler. That's not really true. You really want to say edited by Mahler because Mahler didn't change Schumann's orchestration. In other words, he didn't add Celesta passages and harp glissandos and tam tam wax and contrabassoon parts and piccolos. And he didn't do anything like that. Not a bit. What he did was try and clean up Schumann's scoring. And there's been a little bit of falderall, naturally, these days, over the question of whether or not Schumann's orchestration was appropriate to Schumann's ensemble, that is, orchestras of around 40 to 50 people, smaller groups, like the Leipzig Gavant House that premiered the works. But <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, we have performances on period instruments with Schumann-sized ensembles, and the orchestration is just as clogged and messed up as when you do it with a huge ensemble, because you can always double the winds or do whatever. The, the issue with Schumann's orchestration is thickness. And the size of the string ensemble is not really that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is really not as much of a factor as you might think it is, because the question is doublings. It's Schumann trying to make entrances safe by having the strings play everything or instruments you know, doubling each other so that entrances are always going to be clear and simple because Schumann was a terrible conductor. That was the problem. The problem was not that his, his concept of sonority was off. The problem was that he couldn't realize it in performance. He was really apparently dreadful. And so, and so he, he did his best to make sure that when everyone saw his pieces, they couldn't make mistakes that he would probably cause at the podium. Even Mendelssohn, at the premiere of the Spring Symphony, for example, transposed the opening fanfare up to accommodate the brass instruments. Schumann always had wonderful feeling for the sound of horns. He did not have an equally wonderful feeling for the sound of woodwinds or for the trombones, which in those days were used far too frequently because trombones could play any note. So they could play accompaniments, they could do, you could use them where you couldn't use horns or trumpets. And so Schumann tended to do that. What did Mahler do? Well, what Mahler did was make the orchestration far more chamber-like. He eliminated a lot of the unnecessary doublings. He made the melodic lines clearer, especially when the woodwinds had them. He reduced the constant busyness of strings and the thick chords and the trombones. He allowed the timpani parts to actually follow the bass line because sometimes Schumann did and sometimes he didn't. Um, he did all these things and the result is a much lighter and brighter sound. Um, you may prefer Schumann's heavier, thicker sound. It's, it's certainly more powerful in various places than what Mahler did. You would think Mahler would have wanted to be like slam, bang, crash, you know. But no, it wasn't like that at all. It was a question of pruning, pruning the hedge. I mean, that's what he did. And most performances, even the ones that use Schumann's original orchestration, they do the same thing. 
they either double something so you can hear it, or they knock something down in terms of dynamics. I mean, George Sell did phew, as much just about as much as Mahler did, as often as not. And there are whole swaths of these pieces where Mahler did absolutely nothing. He just left it alone because it was fine. So it was actually a very sensitive job that Mahler did. And those of you who listen to this, as I originally did, and I say, is, you know, thinking, oh boy, Mahler reorchestrated it. Oh, there are E-flat clarinets. And, yeah. No, nothing like that. It's very, very respectful. And if anything, a little bit, a little bit under, underplayed, unless you really like go for it. So what does Merit Alsop do? Does she go for it? Well, yeah, I mean, she sort of does. I mean, up to a point, these are lively, fresh performances that actually suit the orchestration rather well. I mean, they do. The tempos are quite lively. Um, you know, I, I, there's no dead spots anywhere. Uh, the orchestration is clean and clear, so you, you don't have to do as much to try and make the music tell. I miss the weight. I miss those big ballsy climaxes with rich brass textures and things like that. I really do. But Schumann's first two symphonies, the first and second, um, do not have the problems that the later ones do. They really don't. I mean, Schumann's orchestration got worse, actually, as he got older. First of all, he had mental issues. Who knows what role that played? But his inability as a conductor to realize his works led him to orchestrate ever more thickly and clumsily. The Rhenish and the revised version of the Fourth Symphony really are the problematic works. The first two, not so much. So you're not going to hear, um, I think, the kind of the kind of like wholesale wholesale, you know, deconstruction that you will more frequently in the later works. Mahler had to do more in the third and fourth than he did in one and two. Now the performances themselves, like I said, are are, are zippy and lively and charming and and enjoyable, and I have no issue with those at all. They are not like Staatskapelle Dresden with Savalisch or Vienna Philharmonic with Bernstein, people who go crazy, or Zinman's second cycle, or Barenboim's, I mean, the really great Schumann cycles with the original orchestrations. I think those are preferable. I really do. But this was very, very enjoyable. I, I have to say, I had no no issues with it. It's as good as the Shai Gavant House cycle, which, you know, I mean, like I said, you may not be able to find anymore. And, you know, to hear one composer's take on another is always interesting, especially when it's done sensitively. Because Mahler loved Schumann, he loved these symphonies, and he even, he did even more crazy stuff with Beethoven than he ever did with this. I would like to hear his version of the Manfred Symphony that began with a simple crash that Schumann never had. Now, there's a little bit of interventionist stuff, but there's nothing like that here. They're just, these are just nice, fresh performances of the first two Schumann symphonies that sound much lighter and brighter than they normally do. And um, if that's something that intrigues you, then by all means, give this a listen. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.